Getting started with a bounty is all about having the right skill set and the ability to do the most common jobs. One of the most common use cases for bounties is to take a bunch of training data and train an AI model on it so it can answer questions based on the training data. And really, that's not that complicated a process. Today, we're gonna to take a look at training an AI on a stack of training data and seeing how we can customize that to work in different ways. Now, there are a bunch of ways that we can do this. And if you go and read OpenAI's documentation, you probably get stuck there for quite a while because actually feeding documentation into the raw OpenAI API is quite difficult and takes a lot of manual categorization. Let's bring in Langchain and use some of its capabilities to make that much easier. We're building this in Python today, but similar rules and strategies applies for lots of different programming languages. So let's get started. First thing I'm gonna do is create a Python REPL. And the first thing I'm gonna do is bring in my OpenAI key, because that's always important. That should be stored in secrets. Now it's worth remembering that if you give a copy or a fork of this REPL to another user, maybe the bounty poster, they're not gonna get a copy of any secrets. So you will need to advise them to add their own secrets when they receive the REPLs. We're gonna call it OpenAI API key and simply paste it in from the website. With that done, we're in a good place to start. We'll need to import OS for that to work. It's also then installing Langchain from the package manager. With that installed, we can get started building. The first thing we're gonna do is build our store of data. So let's go and do that first. Let's create a folder called training. And we're gonna populate that with text documents, markdown files, or anything that's easy for a computer to read. Now I'm gonna fill mine full of some legal documents. These are normally very difficult to get in a format that you can feed to OpenAI in a native way. And let's say, as an example, I'm trying to build an AI to answer simple legal questions about employment law in the UK. Now, I'm very roughly pasting an entire law or entire act into my REPL here, which traditionally would have been quite difficult to get in the right place. Now, bring in as many files as you can there. The more you've got, the better. The bigger the comprehensive understanding and knowledge that the user's got to work with, the better the training will be. However, it is worth remembering that useless training data is just an expense in terms of tokens. The way the payment model works for OpenAI is you pay for the amount of tokens that it takes to run the query and the amount of tokens it takes to send it back to you. When we're training a model, we can't use GPT 3.5 Turbo, which is the chat GPT API. It just doesn't support training to this level. So we're gonna be using the more expensive GPT-3. When you're building these things, it's worth keeping costs into consideration for the bounty poster. I have two in. I could spend a while adding in more information and more context if I'd like, but I'm not going to at this point. What I am gonna do is write some code to read in all the files from that folder and then turn that into a training model. I'm gonna use pathlib so I can access the path and I'm gonna start extracting that data. So what this will do is it will access the training data folder. Let's check first to make sure that there's at least one item in there. And with that done, let's start extracting the contents and turning it into something useful that we can train with. And the basic idea is this. We need to bring in all the text from the training data. Then, we need to convert it into tokens. The maximum token size in something like GPT-3 is 2,000. We need to split this up into 2,000 character chunks or thereabouts. For this, I'm going to import and bring in TextSplitter from Langchain. I'm gonna start by making a list for data to store everything in. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open every file in the training data and copy it into the data list. And if we run this, we should see it pop through every single file in those folders and add them to that list. We haven't actually done anything with it yet, so let's start by tokenizing it. So let's make our text splitter. 
Our chunk size is the maximum amount of tokens we can have in any one place. That's 2,000 for most OpenAI protocols, but do check the documentation on it. The other thing we need to add in is a separator character. Now, I'm going to use slash M, or the new line character, which will mean that as it splits it, it puts a new line between each chunk. Okay, let's split that up into its chunks. I make a new list to store this in. I'm going to pull out each set in the data and I'm going to docs.extend text splitter, which is the variable I just set up, split text. So that is going to chop it up into chunks of 2000 characters. And you can see this is all very quick at the moment. because It's just dealing with text. We haven't actually computed any of the similarity indexes or any of the things we actually need to make the training model. Now this is where we need to import a few more libraries. We need to bring in face, which is a way of storing data objects in a vector format. Now, all that means is we're going to be storing information and numbers in a very easy to access manner. The numbers we're going to store is something called the similarity index, which allows the AI to match up questions with answers. I'm then going to bring in from Langchain its ability to deal with face objects. I'm also going to need my OpenAI embeddings part from Langchain. Now, embeddings is OpenAI's term for this training data. It allows us to send off this training vector, combine it with OpenAI, and get answers that are based on the training data. So this is one of the most important things. Now, of course, I'm using the most popular version at the moment, which is OpenAI. But the nice thing about Langchain is that it supports embeddings for multiple different LLMs. And all you need to do is look at the documentation in Langchain to be able to change that. And your fundamental code remains very, very similar. I'm also going to import Pickle, which is just a nice way of us writing out objects. And I'm just going to click Run to make sure that all those libraries are installed. So with the text split, the next thing we need to do is put it into the vector store and, and calculate the similarity index. Now, Langchain does most of that behind the scenes for us, thankfully. So let's put that all into code. So we're going to build a face vector store from some texts. The texts are the docslet that we've already tokenized into the maximum token chunk size. It's going to be in the open AI embeddings format. So it's going to use all the instructions to calculate similarity indexes and do everything it needs to do to make it compatible with open AI. Now, what I'm going to do is write this to a file. This is really important for you when you're talking to your bounty poster about this bounty because storing the training data in a vector format means that it is much cheaper in terms of computation and also cost than constantly sending it back and forth to OpenAI to be processed. This method essentially caches the learning data and sends it out with the API calls so that we are saving money, time and compute. Now I'm going to call mine training.index just to be clear with it and what I'm going to do is wipe out my old index to save some memory. Now the reason this is important in a REPL of course is that your REPL unless you've boosted it has a small amount of RAM. So once you've generated all this amazing training data you want it to disappear from the RAM because we've just saved it to the file store. We're also going to stick this out as a pickle file WB, of course, is write binary. That means it's going to write binary data straight out into the file. So if we run this now, it'll take a little bit longer to process. But what it does, is it takes both sets of training data or as much training data as you can throw at it. And it turns it into the OpenAI embeddings format that is needed to actually customize the prompting. This may take quite a while, especially if you've got a lot of information. In my case, I've got two written laws that it's processing, a lot of text, so that's going to take a while. You might find if it's lots and lots of small company data or lots and lots of information about how a person should act or how the chatbot should act, it'll probably be quicker. But I've got a lot of legalese here to process, massive amount of chunks and tokens, so we'll see how that goes. So with that done, we've got a cached version of our pickle file and our index file which are essentially the training data that we need to send off to OpenAI. Now with that done, your training program is complete. And what we need to do now is write the program to send the prompts out to OpenAI and receive the responses. So how do we do that? We'll start with a simple command line version, which will teach you the principles 
which you can then go and take to your language of choice. What I'm going to do is just indent all this code and turn that into a subroutine. That means I can call it again if I want to, but I don't necessarily need to. And the first thing I need to, of course, is just open up all those files and load them back into memory. This might seem a bit redundant to you, but you saw how long it took to compute that similarity index for all that data. It is going to take us a while to do that every single time if we want to chat to the chatbot. The caching of the files makes this much, much easier in advance. So we'll read in the file. RB, of course, is read binary, so we need to read this binary file back in. So we run that, check that works. And that loads it back into RAM for us. Now with that done, we need to start messing around with OpenAI. So let's go and import those libraries. We're going to bring in the OpenAI part of Langchain and the LLM chain part of Langchain, as well as prompts, which will allow us to shockingly send prompts. And we're good to go. Now our next thing is we'll need to write a master prompt. This is the context you give to OpenAI when it runs. You can't just give it a data store and be like, cool, data store, do your stuff. You do need to introduce the point of it, how it's going to answer and basically engineer a prompt that will get the best response. In this case, I'm going to say you are a legal. Now this part at the end just shows OpenAI what the format of its memory will be like. It will not store any memory for us on its servers. We have to store that ourselves and also send that each time we want to send content. So let's make a prompt. We need to specify the template to use first of all, and that's going to be our master prompt. We're then going to add in some input variables. That's going to be an array here where we're going to give it the history of the conversation, the context of the conversation, and the question itself. Now this sets up the prompt to expect to see a history, a context, in other words, our embeddings, our data set that we've already worked out, and then the actual question that's being proposed. Now we need to get this onto the LLM chain now. By default, it'll use the best OpenAI version it can. In this case, DaVinci 3. We can customize that if you want, but take a look at the documentation if you need to customize it for a certain way. Just remember, you cannot use ChatGPT 3.5 Turbo in this context. It just doesn't work like this. It works very, very different. We'll set the prompt up to be the prompt we've just set. And the LLM is going to be OpenAI. And one argument we have to set is the temperature. Now, the temperature variable is between 0 and 2, usually. Sometimes it's between 0 and 1. You might need to check your documentation for this. But what temperature is, how much randomness should the AI be allowed to have? In other words, how much should it be allowed to hallucinate? Now, in the context of mine, where it's giving legal advice, I'm going to say not at all. But if you're building a bot for different purposes, you might want it to do some hallucination to be able to answer questions that it's not trained. We can tweak that number later if we need to. I'm going to make a sub quick subroutine, which gets the question and the history. So the first thing we're going to do is do a similarity search from the docs and the question to find the most relevant parts that we could want. We're then going to go and, and add the most similar sections to the contexts list. And what this section of code is, it loops through those most significant similar bits of data to the question and lumps them all in for us. This then sends it off to the LLM chain and comes back with the answer. We then need to write the actual function that allows the user to interact. Now, of course, everything else we've built so far is very, very generic. This is the bit that ties it into the command line. And so depending upon what your bounty poster wants you to be building, you might need to think about a different way of dealing with that. I'm going to build history as I go, because remember, that's our job to build the history of the conversation. So what I'm going to do is use input just to ask a question. I'll then use that on message function to deal with that, sending it both the question and the history, and then print out the answer from the bot. At this point, it would loop back up, but we need to make sure that history is preserved of the conversation. So history.append, it's finding the chunks of the learning material that is most relevant. It's sending that as well as the full history and the new question over to the LLM, 
and OpenAI should send us back a response. So let's try this out. And if I can spell page content correctly, that would be amazing. Doc, singular. So there we go, we've got a bot trained on UK employment law here that we can ask questions to. Now that temperature value, remember, is really important. The closer to zero, the less hallucinations it will do, and the more it will use the data set you've got to work out its answers. You've got a basis there for building any LLM trained content generator you want. Now, of course, you might be a front end developer, so what else could we add to you? Well. You could go and build a simple API to this in Flask if you wanted to, running this entire thing through Flask and then connecting to it remotely. If you want more information about that, because this video is already quite long, I'm going to point you to this video, which has all the code that we've talked about, as well as the API built in, which you can use and connect to the back end. Building an API is a great way of utilizing multiple REPLs to build a single project. I hope that you can take this knowledge and go and train the LLM for your bounty in a really interesting way. Don't forget, a lot of this is about prompt engineering. If your LLM isn't quite doing what you think it should, try tweaking your master prompt and try adding more information and more rules into the training data set. This will force your LLM to behave in different ways and of course give you more opportunity to customize it to your bounty poster's heart's desire. Go build something cool.